What's going on gamers? My name is Andrew J. Landy. I'm the Director of Talent and Community Relations for Evil Orchid Studios. I'm here with the CEO, the big yeah. man himself, Mikel DeBerry. Mikel, what's hey, going man. on, man? Hey, how you doing? I'm very well. So, I understand we've got a little project go going called The Orphanage, is that right? That's right. So, can you tell us a little bit about The Orphanage? Well, The Orphanage is a um, 16th century horror adventure game. Okay. And uh, throughout the game, you're going to have twists and turns. You're going to experience lots of, lots of fun things that are going to spring up on you. Mm -hmm. Some will be alluded to, and some you'll just have to find on your own. Okay. So, when I'm the player, can you tell me a little bit about the character I'm going to be and who I'm going to be in this game? So, first run through, you're going to play uh, Aramis, and he is the main character. He's the whole reason the game exists. Okay. Um, He's brought to the orphanage. Mm. Uh, once you get to the orphanage, your job is to just live. There's also a second character, which you'll find as you play the game. Okay. So it's not just one, but possibly a couple. Oh, definitely going to be a couple. Definitely going to be a couple. Now, you, you mentioned that this orphanage is creepy. What's gone into developing this environment? So we've done research as far as what is a creepy environment. So we've gone to abandoned psychiatric hospitals. Okay. We've gone to abandoned churches. Mm -hmm. We've gone to uh, crime scenes. Okay. And just taking the creepy element. And the one thing everything had in common was that as soon as you step in, you feel like the whole place is just not right. Mm -hmm. You feel like uh, you just shouldn't be there. So we've gone to great lengths as far as the detail of the levels mm -hmm. to make them feel like, yes, this is normal, but no, you should not be here. Yeah, like, I, I don't belong here, right? Right. It's beyond just the average, oh, there's fog, so mm -hmm. I know something is not right. Right. So I'm walking into a dead zone. I should probably expect to get my head cut off or something. Exactly. <laughs> so there, there are times where you'll be walking around, you'll meet the nicest people, and they're out to kill you. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and there's going to be times where you meet the meanest people, mm. and they're out to kill you. Okay. So. And there's going to be times where you're alone, and everybody's out to kill you. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't mean that all the time everyone's just out to kill you. There are going to be some characters where your behavior is going to dictate their behavior. Mm -hmm. So if you're interrupting them in the middle of a sentence, they'll kill you. Oh, wow. <laughs> so sometimes you might have to actually listen to their whole text, yeah. and that's going to influence how the characters interact with your main character, is that right? Right, and what they say may not have any bearing on what you're doing right now. Right. So I'm understanding this is survival horror. This is survival horror. Okay, uh, can you name any of the influences that you may have had when coming up with the idea for the orphanage? Oh, definitely. Um, I had uh, some experience with some uh, foster kids okay. that stayed with me, mm -hmm. uh, and just hearing about what they had to go through mm -hmm. as far as being in a normal foster system. Okay. Uh, also, just going and being in medicine at one point in time, mm -hmm. knowing how things work, mm -hmm. knowing that in every hospital there's a morgue, okay. and uh, you know there's a reason no one ever presses the basement button. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You don't go down there. <laughs> right, exactly. That's not where you want to be. Right. So all of that together kind of just added to the experience of mm -hmm. this is what is creepy to me, and finding our our fellow designers had similar experiences, mm. we just built on that. Okay. So, uh, gameplay-wise, what should people expect when they play this game? Should they be expecting to run around? Is it kind of a walk through the park? Uh, what, what should gamers expect? So, one of the things that I enjoy mm. is standard RPG style playing. Okay. We've mixed that, and we've taken it a step further by adding in... Uh, two-on-two, four-on-two fighting scenarios. Okay. Um, you're going to be in different types of fights. Okay. Uh, some you won't be prepared for. Some you'll have to run away from. Okay. Some you actually do fight. Mind you, your character is just normal. There's nothing super about the character at all. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just an average Joe like you and I. All right. Uh, you can't beat everybody you meet. Okay. So there's just times where you just can't. Right. And even though you have the weaponry or you have whatever tactic that you think is going to give you the edge, it may not necessarily give you the edge. Okay. So it's not about just building and grinding your character, but where you want to build an experience where you, know, you have to choose. Is it really wise to fight right now or is it better to run and live another day? Right. And it, it goes beyond that. It's not just, 
hey, do I fight now and do I win and mm-hmm. collect something? Because you may not collect anything at the end of a fight. Right. So now it's like, do I do this and risk not being strong enough for a future possible battle? Okay. So you really want the players to make wiser decisions that are going to affect how the game plays in the future. Yes. Good. Now, I understand there's been a lot with the music in this game. Can you tell me a little bit about what's going into producing the musical content of The Orphanage? So we've had uh, all of our music custom made. Mm -hmm. Um, We're not purchasing any music from anybody. We're not using any pre-made music. It's all handwritten and composed by our director of music. Okay. On top of that, it's it's all being performed live. Live, okay. So we record it by actual humans playing it. Mm-hmm. There's no computers in it except for when we're mixing things down. Of course, yeah. when, when it comes to the post process. Right. So you've got a bunch of live artists actually in the studio, and we have people doing the music, composing them, almost like a movie score. Yes. Yeah. So... Uh, Stuff like this, all the gameplay that you're bringing in, the environments, the music, it takes a little more than just the uh, elbow grease that we have. What's it going to take for this project to get going and get it flying? So, so far, we've spent around Uh $50,000. That's all come out of our private pockets. Right. Uh, We have another $40,000 that we need to spend in order to get it done. However, we only have $20,000 left in our coffers, so... We need you guys to help out and pitch in the rest of the $20,000 so we can pay for artists, we can pay for more recording, Mm -hmm. and we can pay to get it done. Right. So you guys, visit the link Indiegogo, help fund the orphanage, help get this great game going, and hopefully we'll get to see you in the orphanage, and I hope you guys survive. Mikhail, thank you very much, and I'll see you at the finish line. All right. Excellent.